So what if you know about it? Second way, uh, yeah, so uh, kind of like I was talking about it just now, yeah? So we are talking about the differences among us. <clears throat> Conflict by itself can be an emotional, emotionally arousing activity. We can help to manage the level of emotions involved by being focused on the issues on hand. So second step, after we identify the conflict, especially, you know, I talk about perpetual issues being things that keep recurring. It's not easy to talk about because if you know that that's an issue, more likely than not, your partner also know that that's an issue. Okay, so it becomes a very difficult topic because everyone knows that we keep talking about it, but we never quite have a resolution. There's a tendency for people to want to build a case using previous arguments you have with your partner or even the character of your partner. Kind of talked about it last sessions. What is that? If you remember that horseman, if you start using the conflict, if you start actually using the character of your partner in an argument, that's essentially using one of the horsemen's, which is criticism. Not helpful. Do it long term, your partner actually, it actually strains that relationship. So we spoke at length about that last week. Um, very, very quick recall, using a lot of you statements, using a lot of you never, you always, kind of very global, you know, never, always are very global terms that we, we, we kind of uh, attribute to our partners. It can stir up a lot of defensiveness in the other person. So when you're managing an important issue, such as a long-standing conflict, it is important to focus on the issue on hand and not expand it to the past. Another very, very common issue that couples tend to engage in is wanting to resolve many conflicts um, at once, at the same time. So that can be very, very overwhelming. If there are indeed several issues that you really want to talk about with your partner, I would like to encourage you to agree with your partner. If let's say you kind of have attended to one issue, say for example, you know, this comic is classic. What are we talking about exactly? And you see that actually this comic, I mean, it wasn't deliberate, but I was trying to look for comics that actually symbolize couples argument. You see that they actually talk about the perpetual issues, physical intimacy, financial and parenting. So when we actually start to talk about too many issues at the same time, it can be very overwhelming. Agree with your partner if let's say you're done with one issue, take a break revisit the rest of the issue if there's still a need to do so at another occurrence. That's really to give each other a little bit of emotional bandwidth as well as breathing space to just kind of like give yourself a pat on your back that you kind of resolve or even manage, at least if you can't resolve, manage one issue that matters to both of you very well. Take a break. Go to the next topic, another occasion. Okay, so very, very classic. Um, focus, what does it mean by focus on the issue, not the person? It's also talking about um, Sometimes you actually, that's a classic sign of uh, criticisms. I mentioned just now about laundry. So instead of saying that, um, would it be possible for you to help me put that laundry inside the basket next time round? Don't go into that mode of criticizing your partner in saying that I cannot say, for example, very classic, but very, very detrimental from relationship. I'm not your mate. Or I don't know how many children I have. I thought I only have one kid. You know, these are really not helpful comments. So don't focus on the person. Really just focus on, if your issue is with that sock on the floor, focus on that sock on the floor, okay? Let the past rest, standard. Um, if it has been resolved or even if it has not been resolved, one issue at a time, don't go back to things that you have talked about last week or even last year. If you want to talk about long-term relationship, right? Um, by the time, can you imagine, by the time you are 60, 70 years old, an argument between the two of you is going to take way too long and it gets so frustrating. Okay, so that's the second step. After you identify the perpetual issue, deal with it one issue at a time. Third thing, this is something that many people find it most difficult and most unnatural to do, finding common interests. In a conflict just now, we focus so much, in, and conflict nature is, is about our incompatibility of the way that we handle things, our differences. And yet, here I am suggesting that we look for common interests. See, what happens in a conflict very often is when two people decide to be at different position and attempt to win the other person over with their perspective, as with any good fighter, if we are a good fighter, we will guard our position very fiercely. Yet, strategically, right? This is not probably the most helpful in a relationship. If you can recall just now the overlapping circles that I've showed earlier on, conflicts are best managed when we can start off with where we are similarities in. 
the overlap areas. Knowing that we are not all that different, knowing that we have actually core things that we believe in, core things that we are similar in, it helps us to align ourselves together and see how we can tackle the, the differences. Let me use back my favorite couple, and I definitely hope there's no James and Jeanette among our audience. So let's say James come back one day sharing with Jeanette that he's thinking of taking a break of half a year from work. James and Jeanette, we know that they are very different in, in viewpoint from our two sessions ago already. So I'm not going to go through all of this in the interest of time, um, but this is essentially kind of a, a quick mapping out of their managing expectations. You see that if green color represents Jeanette and orange color represents James, the two of them has very different viewpoint when it comes to financial. Jeanette leans towards having a very safe financial uh, 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 asset. Whereas James Wright, the financial viewpoint leans towards being able to have financial freedom to spend on things that he wants to. Yeah, so it looks like they are so different. But if let's say one thing that we could explore with them, I mean, if, if I would see them as a couple, if I would explore with them whether James can take that half a year break, we probably will end up fighting too much about whether you can or you cannot. But if we take that, put that aside for a while and ask them, actually when it comes to financial, right, what is their core belief about financial? We will see that between them, they can actually agree that no matter what our financial belief is, you see the must-have? Um, let me see if I can use the pointer. Okay, laser pointer. You can see the must-have? Both of them actually agree that no matter what, right, they have to be debt-free. And if I could actually build on them and actually build on the similarities between them, potentially we could actually say that, okay, good. Let's start off with the similarity. Both of you agree you want to be debt-free. Let's see with that, where do we go from there? Okay, so finding common interest is a starting place for us to start conversation. If you're already at polarities, it's very hard to manage the conflict. Okay, um, let's see. Okay. We talked about that previously as well, but after you start looking at the similarity, you kind of want to explore, okay, despite our similarity, where are our differences? Why is it that we are different? What sits behind this behavior? How come James wants to take a half a year break? How can Jeanette help uh, understand James better so that she can work with James on this issue together? Okay. Let's, I would usually recommend, it's, people often tell me, you know, I, I don't know how to actually communicate with my partner to what you say look beneath the be behavior, look beneath the surface. How can we do about how can we go about doing it? Three quick tips that I'll share with all of you. See where that brings you to start conversation. First and foremost, I will invite you to start a conversation of you want to look beneath the surface, you share your observation with your partner. Hey James, I noticed that you have been coming home from work looking more tired than usual. Second, what do you do after you share your observation? Convey your concern to your partner. I'm wondering how you're coping at work. Third, express your interest to your partner. Would you like to share more with me so that I can do, I, so, so that I can know what I can do to support you? To be fair, I don't think these are the way that we generally talk. But I'd like to encourage all of us as we, because this is very much on building the safety and inviting our, our partner to communicate in, to us in a manner that goes beyond the superficial, that goes beyond the behavior, that goes into the inner thoughts and feeling that does require us to feel that we want to do this because this is safe to do it. So share your observation, convey your concerns, express your interest. Sounds great, right? You know how it can be better? If James ever say that it is okay, nothing is wrong, okay? Jeanette does not take it personally and felt that she has been brushed aside. Remember our previous uh, pursuer and redrawal cycle from last week? The more, James, uh, the more Jeanette takes it personally and pursue it, the more James might felt cornered and back off further. In that case, what can Jeanette do? I mean, I tried, I tried, you, know, you asked me to do that, I tried, but James just tell me it's okay. Potentially, if I can work with Jeanette, I might actually be telling Jeanette to consider responding in a way to say, good to hear that you're holding up fine. If and when you'd like to share your thoughts with someone, I'll be here for you. That's really helping James to give it some space. And James know that if he is ready to talk about it, Jeanette is ready to listen. 
and Jeanette doesn't have to feel bad about not being able to support James because Jeanette also understand that maybe then and then James really doesn't want to talk. Forcing him to talk before he's ready is probably not going to be most helpful. Okay, so look beneath the surface. Hopefully that tip opens up conversation between you and your partner. But remember, even if that timing is not right for either party, don't take it personally. Leave it with a parting note to say that we can talk about it when you are ready. Last bit. Short of dating ourselves, we rarely get someone who is like us. But honestly, I did think of it before that if I were to meet someone like myself, remember how I tell you all that I can be a very impatient and very opinionated person? That's where I actually start to be more empathic towards my partner. While we spoke about the need to accommodate, to compromise, to, uh, com uh, to, to collaborate, you know, conflict management style, right? It is also important to recognize that it's not the same as changing the other person. When someone changes, it's because they want to it may be under some influence of ourselves, but it's definitely not because of us per se. Because the only thing that is between our control as a person is our own thoughts and behavior. We cannot change someone else. It's not your vision of the perfect relationship potentially. If there are certain things that you and your partner cannot agree on, decide if they are your deal breaker. If it is not, how can you negotiate all this compromise? That might not be your version, your vision of the perfect relationship. But from my perspective, that is the closest to how we can get to perfection in a relationship is when we allow ourselves, ourselves to accept that rarely any relationship is perfect. So neither will my relationship be perfect. We make the best of our relationship. Okay. So in terms of very, very quick summary, um, let me see. Very, very quick summary. Working of perpetual issue, issues that we cannot resolve. These are the five pointers that I'd like to share with you tonight. But before we go off tonight, I'd like to spend the last couple of minutes to share a little bit about this situation of when love hurts. Very often, I get questions like, what if my partner does not want to communicate? I cannot discuss anything with my partner without going into a big fight and it often ends up with me crying. I think I have not done relationship justice like I mentioned at the start if I I have all of you walk away from the whole series thinking that a four-hour session can attend to all couples' relational need. If, let's say, following these four sessions, you can work on it and you can go, perhaps, if, let's say, there's a need to follow up with a therapist, I think that's a good start. For this particular last segment, I hope that, to emphasize that, there is a time when actually love can hurt. I'm very sure that we do get hurt now and then in our relationship when things are unpleasant. We do feel disappointed. We do feel upset, pain, etc. But when love starts to hurt so much that your physical, your psychological, your emotional and other aspects of your life become so affected, even to the extent that you are fearing that you are losing your life, you're starting to realize that you are losing your own identity or your emotional well-being, perhaps you may need to evaluate what is going on. You hear me say very commonly, uh, or almost throughout the whole session, that there are reasons behind behavior. And just now, I spent so much time talking about finding out what's beneath this behavior. It's helpful for us indeed to find out what lies beneath some of this behavior with our partner. However, however, I'd like to emphasize that this is not the same as condoning abusive behavior. No one deserves to be abused, no matter how legit the reason might sound. While we may be able to understand what prompt and particular behavior and potentially, a potentially abusive behavior, violence should never be justified in all circumstances in a relationship. I do recognize this is a complicated issue and it is a big topic by itself. I don't want to do injustice by rushing through it. For tonight, I would like to share a piece of work which was adapted from the Dulic model from Minnesota regarding the usage of power and control in an abusive relationship. The original work was a number of decades ago when the statistics for women who experienced abuses were far more common. Today, the model I'm going to show, if some of you are familiar with, I'm kind of sharing a slightly different model. This is kind of a neutral, a gender neutral model because I believe that in today's context, anyone can be a victim of abuse. Although statistically, we still continue to see more women who experience abuse, but my years of work has actually very successfully convinced me that anyone can experience that. And it is not because the person, I want to emphasize again, it is not because the person deserved it. And if, let's say, you experience abuse, it is definitely not also a sign of weakness. 
if you find yourself experiencing any, and this is a non-exhaustive list, but if you do find yourself experiencing none of any of the above, you may wish to speak to a social worker or a counselor who can help to explore further. Or if you don't know someone else who's experiencing any of the above, potentially they might be in a situation where it might be abusive. Re revolving around this power and control is a lot of usage of sexual or physical violence as well. So in our next couple of months, we are going to also roll out a series on domestic violence, intimate partners violence. So if let's say you want to find out more, you could actually stay tuned for that particular series as we cover more of this topic. Okay, with that, wow, that's a bit, a bit kind of a, a serious but yet I believe important end to our uh, sessions for tonight. A very quick recap for our series, for this whole series. Oh, sorry. Four season, a uh, four series that we had. Make sure that your love tank make get a point to make sure that your love tank is constantly being filled out. Learning about managing your relational expectations, practice a good communication, and have a good fight with your partner. Hopefully, tonight's session is really helping you to know how can you actually manage uh, conflict in a more constructive manner. Okay, so for the rest of our time, I probably would be uh, leaving the time for a little bit of q and A. I'm not too sure if we have any questions tonight because I do know that uh, it's much easier for me to talk about managing conflict than to really think about how you can manage conflict uh, with your partner. If you do have any questions, feel free to raise up at this juncture. Um, Ting Ting, what, what's, what's, what's the data on your site saying? Do you have any questions from me tonight? Um, we do have a few. Maybe let me uh, just show it here. Um, we have a total of four. Um, oh, I'll okay. probably wow. two main things here. Um, sure. The first two will be mainly talking about what if the conflict is really ongoing for quite some time mm. and it's really an impasse here, what, what do we do? Um, second part seems to be talking about um, different, okay, in fact, different and the same uh, conflict management styles. Yeah, just now I think we said if it's different, what do we do? But if it's the same, then would that cause a problem as well? Yeah. Okay, I think, um, well, it's, it's the hour of the night. So I think these are two very big questions. Shall we tackle one question at a time? Which question do you think we should tackle first based on questions that you have seen so far? Um, I don't know, maybe we could do the, the first two probably. Yeah. Okay. Um, so me and my partner just cannot agree on serious things such as financial finances, what can we do? Okay, um, that's kind of like attempting to combine our whole series, love series into one question. I hope in the very last session, we could actually use some of the learning from our previous session. First and foremost, what exactly about finances that you don't agree on? Okay, I'm not too sure if the example of Gina and James earlier on kind of uh, shine, shine a little bit of light on it. Um, in terms of, is it about the way we spend money or is it about the value that we have? Uh, whether they are your must-have or whether they are your uh, good to have. So, thinking maybe I'm going to go back to my slide earlier on uh, so that that kind of make a little bit more sense as I share that. Okay, let me see where it is. Okay. Okay. So coming back to James and uh, Jeanette. Uh, so see, when you talk about, uh, you have very different views on finances. So similarly, using Jeanette and James' example, what is something that you all can, maybe start with, what are the things that you all have similarity about? So Jeanette and James managed to figure out that actually for them, being debt-free is important. So what can James and Jeanette possibly do in that situation? If let's say, James actually helped Jeanette to share, uh, understand that the purpose of wanting to take a six months break is because he is really very tired at work. I wonder if Jeanette can appreciate that behavior a little bit more because you remember how we talk about knowing why the person wants to do that thing, right? So if let's say Jeanette does indeed figure that, oh, it's not because James was being vivalous about money. It wasn't because James felt that he has too much money, but James was really feeling quite stressed out at work that he really wanted to take a break. So with Jeanette understanding that, then going back to their similarity that they want to be debt-free, how can they allow James to have that space to recharge, to take care of him, his own mental health, his own well-being without going to debt? 
if let's say they could talk about it, right? Potentially, uh, James can actually share about how he had planned about it. He had thought about it because he doesn't want to be in debt. So actually, he had actually stacked aside some money. He had been saving towards this particular plan of wanting to take a break for half a year. And he has potentially also maybe say, I don't know, work with his employer to say that this is on no pay leave. A job is waiting for him to go back in half a year time. So he's not actually making this decision uh, without planning. And if Jeanette could actually see that, then potentially they are, their arguments is not stuck on whether James can take a break or not. But having had that conversation might help them to see that, okay, let's give James some time to take a break. And in the meanwhile, we, are know, that, we know that we are financially sound. We are not in financial distress. Okay, so hope that is a little bit of uh, uh, idea of when you when you have a perpetual issue, how can you adopt some of this strategy to work on managing it so it doesn't resolve it doesn't resolve uh, Jeanette's preference that I want you to continue to work as much as possible. You are dipping to your saving. If let's say Jeanette gets her way, she's not going to like it. But if Jeanette understand that that is the decision, understand the needs of James. And agree to disagree that that's not the way that I will do it if it's me. But I understand that you cope with stress in a very different manner as me. As long as it doesn't jeopardize our, our similarity, it's, it's okay that we disagree on how we cope with this situation. Okay, so I think we spent quite a bit of time on this question. I'm not too sure. Shall we go to the next question actually, um, Tining? Um, okay, hold on. Let me just bring back the... Sure. Yep. Um, I don't know, maybe do we want to look at um shall we do yeah. maybe or we'll try one more question? Okay. Hmm. Mm, what, what question shall we pick thinking? Pick one. Oh. Um, because, sorry, I haven't had time to read through all the questions and I'm trying to digest it. Is there something that's quite different from what we have responded to so far? Um, okay, maybe, well, maybe we should ask the audience if there's any, yeah. particular, any particular questions that they actually want us to spend the next couple of minutes left for this series answering. Okay, um, okay I see that actually on our thinking, actually we have questions, further questions from Sam and Pauline in the group chat as well. And I thought these two questions are quite big questions. Sam says, how do we decide that marriage cannot be safe as both are just two different and a divorce may be better? And Pauline had a very similar theme of, is it better to leave a marriage when a child is around one, two years old as compared to a child is older? Um, Sam, Pauline, I'm not too sure if what I'm going to say is going to respond to your question. I think these are very, very big question that I don't want to do it injustice by giving just a one-line statement. These are big life-changing questions that will affect probably not just two individuals, but potentially the, the people who are uh, related to these two individuals. And in polling situation, um, I think a child is involved as well. So to live or not to live, I think ultimately we need to consider many, many factors. If this is something that... Uh, either of you is thinking about, I might want to suggest that you actually maybe want to take this up with a, 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 a counsellor, a therapist, to explore this a little bit more. To be honest, in my work with couples, right, I have seen couples who actually took back their separation uh, deeds because they want, to, they, they want to give it a last shot. And sometimes that can work. So I don't think I have a quick answer to whether is it better to leave or better to separate. Ultimately, is whether two people are still interested to work on it. Yeah, I often tell couple, um, and and I I think this is potentially a hard truth. When it comes to a marriage, it takes two people to come together to sign. So is maintaining a marriage. Yeah, if one party is constantly giving, the other party is constantly receiving. I think that is a marriage that is probably quite imbalanced and it can be, I mean, if both parties are happy with it, I think so be it. That's not for anyone to judge. But if let's say the party who is giving is starting to feel unhappy in the situation, I think that is where I would like to emphasize that that's where I have been uh, again and again saying that it does take effort in a marriage to keep things going or even in a relationship, even if it's not a marriage. Both parties have to come together 
So the hard truth is when it comes to a separation, be it a breakup in a, a relationship or a divorce, it takes one party to decide. So that's where one party can uniform, uh, uh, unilaterally decides to want out. And even if it's not a formal situation, not a formal divorce, not a formal breakup, but if one party decides to withdraw, stonewall, and withdraw from that relationship, not invest in it anymore, not commit in it anymore, I think it is a rough relationship. Okay? But I wouldn't be so deterministic in saying that it cannot be worked on anymore. Okay? So I, I'm not too sure if that answers your questions, but I'll suggest that uh, this would be a better question to really be explored at a more at length rather than a couple of minutes kind of uh, a Q and A. Okay, um, I'm looking at time. Maybe we will take one final question. Um, I am a bit spoiled for choice. Ting Ting, you want to help me out? We have a few questions on Q and A, and Joey has a question. How will you know you should give in or stand your ground? Let me see if there's something similar on our Q and A. Mm. Can I change my partner? He just does not want to listen to me. Okay, maybe let's try to combine a few questions. Uh, Ting Ting, what do you think? It's not, it looks like we are talking about potentially, do I, do I change, does my partner change kind of thing, eh? Yeah. Okay, Tini, I do not know what you think about that. I was thinking ultimately going back to uh, that initial diagram that I showed about the conflict management style. I think a few considerations maybe I can suggest for you to consider. First and foremost, how important is that goal for you? And how important is that relationship for you pertaining to this matter? If it is really about dinner, whether to have Western or Chinese, I don't know whether you understand your ground and really fight until the both of you turn red. Um, if let's say that is very important for you, say for example, for example, my last segment, right, about violence. I have my preference. I think um, without being judgmental, my personal stand and my professional stand is um, I don't advocate for a relationship where that's violent. So if there's violence in a relationship, I do think that that is non-negotiable and that everyone deserves to feel safe. So potentially that would be something that I recommend standing your ground for, even if it means that the relationship might have to go. Okay, assuming that the other party is not interested in working on a non-violent way of interacting. Yeah, so... Um, we are kind of out of time tonight. I hope I answered most of the questions. If not, feel free to actually pop an email to us and I'll try to respond to our question, uh, the remaining questions that you may have. So a very quick round up to the rest of our sessions. Uh, just a bit of administrative things. <clears throat> Let's see. Okay. Um, some of you might have heard of this before, Prepare and Rich. Any of you who's interested, this is a program and services that we are offering to all dating and uh, married couples. Uh, as such, you're in a relationship, actually, I think that's, that's potential for using that. That looks at enhancing the marriage or the relationship on the whole. Not the replacement for couple therapy where there is deep-rooted issues, but it's really more building insights and discussing uh, some of fortifying your, your relationship kind of program. Okay. Uh, contact us, like I said, uh, I don't think I've answered all questions, but if you do have more questions for us, this is where you can reach us, our contact number. Last but not least, take care and stay well. Um, you know, have fun in, in your relationships. Uh, uh, it takes hard work, but I hope that you took away some ideas with you in terms of how you can work on the relationships, build a stronger relationship with your partner. Last sessions for our this series, but it's not the last that you're going to hear from us. Like I mentioned earlier on, we're going to have a more couple-related series. In fact, in fact, in the very, very last quarter of this year, because we can't quite do um, that right now, um, I think the, 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 the experience of having these online sessions has motivated us to do more of these sessions. We're going to speak more. But when time permits, when the situation permits, we're also going to have more face-to-face -face, uh, interactions. Keep a lookout for our programs and services on our any of these platforms. Feel free to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, if that's what you prefer. Something that's very exciting, if you think that you have heard a little bit, but you're wondering how can you do it more personalized, more customized for your relationship without going to see a counselor or therapist. In the last quarter of this year, if we are allowed to meet up, 
uh, we are going to roll a series called the Date Nights. That's where we will be inviting uh, you to join us for a series of face-to-face -face sessions as couples. Uh, in those date nights, we're going to have food, we're going to have drinks, we're going to have conversations, we're going to have couples around us to start practicing together some of these uh, things that we have talked about in our series, Demystifying Love, that will give us a lot of opportunities to practice hands-on and customize a little bit to, in your particular relationship, how can you enhance some of this strategy? Okay, so I look forward to seeing, in fact, not just me, I'm very sure Tini is going to join me in all those sessions. So we look forward to seeing all of you for our next uh, series on couples. Last but not least, we would love to have feedback uh, for our sessions. And at the same time, if you do actually want to have more sessions, more interesting topics that you'd like us to cover, more for us to think about, feel free to, in the comment segment, give us more ideas. What is of interest to you? What you, would you like us to bring forth in our whole series in, come, in time to come? And with that, thank you very much to all of you. Please stay well, Ting Ting. Do, do you have any parting words for our, our very, very lovely audience? Um, well, stay safe and healthy, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. So take care. See you soon. Good night.